Yeah, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Henry, for everyone who doesn't know me yet. Um, welcome back to My, Euro my Ru Europe, sorry. Um, or as we can say today, uh, Moyata Europa. Uh, my Europe is a digital event series that is in a collaboration with several Europe Directs. Every fourth Wednesday, we welcome guests from different countries who give us great insights into their respective countries and work on their own focus, a topic close to the heart. As always, this is an interactive event. Uh, there will be the opportunity to ask questions. To do so, you can use the zoom in, the zoom function at the bottom of the screen. Uh, I will then pick up your question and pass it on to our guest. So much technicality in advance. Uh, here, here's a quick overview to our partners. And um, yeah, let me introduce our guest today. Um, it's Marina Duankova, I think. Duankova? Yes. Perfect. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Marina is uh, 22 years old, uh, a student of culinary arts. She lives and studies in the Bulgarian sea city Varna and has come around in Europe quite a bit. Uh, currently, Marina works as a project coordinator in a social enterprise that offers a first job opportunity to young people from foster homes or from socially vulnerable backgrounds. I don't want to give too much away yet, but Marina will take us along to Bulgaria Brace yourselves, we will start interactively today. And for that, Marina will share her screen now. Marina, the stage is yours. Thank you, Henry. You did all the description that I was planning to do, so <laughs> I couldn't add anything more. I'm gonna share my screen. Can you see it? Yes, with your, uh, with your notes. So I think we, yeah, perfect. That works. Okay. Right. So I'm going to present my country that I love. Uh, and I'm going to show you the things that I appreciate. That's why I said that it's from my perspective. Um, I don't mind being interrupted. So you can ask questions in the chat or uh, however you want. And I don't have expectations for the quiz that uh, follows. So if you give... Uh, wrong or funny answers it's completely fine we're gonna laugh i'm gonna laugh i don't know about you uh this is the flag that's uh, right here and the uh, uh, national coat of arms is on top of it the flag is only the three colors if you haven't seen it here it is for you and now we're gonna do uh i was gonna say short quiz i don't know if it's that short uh so you can uh start the first question Henry or I don't know who's gonna do it I think or it's a uh, multiple choice questions or I will just yeah there it is you want to read the question I don't see it but Which... I know what it is I think just it's not appearing to me um... I don't know what the cause of this is, but maybe I'll just, uh, but we don't have participants yet. There, now you should see it. Yeah, now I see it. So is okay. Bulgaria first world, second world or third world country? I'm asking this because I've heard funny answers and I just wanted to see what your thoughts on this are. First votes are coming in. Wow, <laughs> didn't expect that. Yeah, we have are still coming, but we have a clear tendency. Yeah, yeah. Usually, we'll let it open for just a couple of seconds more. Wow, I'm surprised too. Yeah, I'm also surprised. And maybe um, I just show everyone. Now you can see the uh, results, right? Yes. Okay. So it is a second world country. Um, and usually I get the answer that we are third world country. So 
now you're showing me something completely different. Thank you, but we're not. <laughs> we have many other things to fix before we become first world country. I think we can proceed with the, the next one. Yeah. The second question. We'll start in just a second. I just started. Yeah, everyone, you can answer now. What is the currency of Bulgaria? Wow. Another one with a very clear tendency. Are there still people voting? Yeah, and it looks like we have yeah, some it looks like everyone knows it. Experts here. Yeah. We're planning on uh, adopting the euro in 2024. Uh, there are a lot of uh, different opinions and many people are not happy because we're very big nationalists, but unfortunately maybe it's gonna happen. So yeah, next one. It's question number five, this one. Bulgaria's eastern coast borders with what body of water or which sea could also be asked like that. They're probably wow. all geo guesser. <laughs> yes. Oh, we have we have one disruptor. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was just so uh, happily surprised, but it's also close enough. It is the Black Sea. So thank you for knowing that as well. A bunch of educated you been there? people. What? Have you been there? At the Black at Sea? Black sea. I live at the coast, so I oh, am ah, okay. like 20 minutes away from my house. Okay. Yeah. I think we can proceed. Nice. The, this one, maybe a harder challenge. Yeah, this is a little bit harder, but I was just curious, to be honest. When did Bulgaria become a full member of the European Union? Could be a lucky guess, but... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I put I I'm not gonna okay I think now it's <laughs> oh. not interfere with them. It's another interesting thing because uh, yeah let's look at the results. Um, yeah, we have some people thinking 2015 and it's not too long ago. Yeah, but in the beginning. The right answer is uh, 2007. In the beginning, I I didn't put 2015, but I was like, hmm, I'm gonna put it to see if maybe somebody thinks so. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, I was seven years old when this happened, so I also remember it somehow. It was a crisis, I think that's why. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's continue to question number eight. Which river runs along most of Bulgaria's northern frontier? Oh, I see only one strong contender for this one. Yeah. Is it the right one? <laughs> Go oh, another vote. Uh, yes. And see the results. It yeah. is the new river, yes. I put yeah. some. Yeah. I put uh, mine just I was curious if somebody <laughs> if somebody is gonna choose that one. Yeah. Yes. This is uh, it's our uh, the north uh, uh, northern border. It's only this river, basically. So yeah. uh, 
Yeah, I, I don't think we can get this audience with uh, geography uh, questions. Yeah, they seem pretty good at this. I have other questions as well. It's not only geography. Yeah. But uh, the next question format is really, really interesting. Two truths and one lie. Maybe you uh, know it in the audience. And uh, yeah, two of these statements are true and one is a lie. Maybe, maybe one uh, way you can think more about it. I hope everyone can see the full question or the full answers. If you hold on the dots, I think it shows the the, okay, yeah. the rest of it. Yeah, right. Just let a few seconds go. It looks like we have a split. Not, not too split, but uh, we have a clear winner. Yeah. Uh, that is the lie. The first printed book uh, was in German. Maybe that's why you guessed it. Maybe not. I put it on purpose also to give you some insight on your own country a little bit. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we are uh, the only country in Europe that hasn't changed uh, its name since uh, its foundation. And we have surprisingly uh, a big territory of forests and all of this. I didn't know. I also educated myself during this uh, quiz yeah. while I was making it. Yeah. That's so often the case when you, when you are the teacher, you, you learn yourself. Um, another one. question. Yeah, again, two truths and one lie. I for myself have no clue. <laughs> and I'm not the only one, so. Yeah. Yeah, I think everyone who wanted, ah, yeah, perfect, we have 10 votes, here you can see so the, the lie is uh, the second one, that in Bulgaria there is no punishment for a prisoner who tries to escape uh, the jail because it's a basic human instinct to be free, this is actually happening in Germany, I read about it, <laughs> and yes, Mark Zuckerberg has Bulgarian origin, I forgot, what is it exactly? I think he's, uh, uh, it's not uh, the mother or the father, but uh, either mm, some uncle or a grandpa, something like that. Yeah. Wow, I didn't know that. And the first one was Bulgaria ranks third in Europe for, oh, do you have many uh, archeological uh, sites? Thank you for saying it because I'm also struggling with this word. <laughs> yeah, I'm happy that I managed. Uh, we have we have many. Yeah, we also have the oldest uh, golden treasure in Europe. We have many many cities mm -hmm. that uh, uh, are um, marked as a historical uh, capitals and uh, many things that are part of the uh, UNESCO yeah. treasures and things like that. So yeah, I didn't know we're third but uh, we are. Perfect. And now to the last uh, multiple choice question here. Oops, I spoiled. <laughs> Did you? Oh, wow. Oh. <laughs> it's okay. But only, only one. Yeah. It's still a 50 decision. Let's see who paid attention now. <laughs> yeah. I 
people are hating on our man, I see. Oh, oh, one. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Shame on you, whoever picked it. Yeah, I spoiled in the previous question that we have the oldest golden treasure. I think it's in the world, yeah. I'm not sure if it was in Europe. I think it's in the world. Mm -hmm. really. Yeah, could be. Uh, so the lie is that the Bulgarian men have been ranked among the most beautiful men in the world. It's actually uh, Bulgarian women have been ranked among the most beautiful uh, in the world. So it's almost true, but not really. <laughs> I don't know where the men stand, but... It's not among the most yeah. beautiful, obviously. Yeah, I don't know how reliable such a scale is. <laughs> yeah, me neither. It depends on who you ask. Yes, but apparently some people have been asked and we are famous. I've heard it from people from different countries like, oh, you have beautiful women there in Bulgaria, I've heard. Yeah, so. yeah then uh, let's continue with open questions. We have uh, four open questions and uh, you and the audience, you can type your um opinions in the chat and we will read it so i'm sharing my screen right yeah it's still okay. sharing so the first one is that one simple one maybe you know it uh you can type in the comments what you think about that in the chat sorry like i'm a vlogger or something yeah Ah, we have uh, someone wrote, I don't know if you can see the Q in the Q&A tool, someone <laughs> wrote his answer. Yes. Jessica said it's Cyrillic, you said? Yeah. And I think she, she uh, spoiled it for everyone. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> but maybe it's the wrong one, Em. You don't know. Maybe. Yeah, I don't see. Yeah, Kyrillish, uh, the German word. Yeah. I think you, you, we can we can uh, we can go to the next one. Yeah, it because is. it's right. Kyrillish is yes. right. Congrats to the first person who got it right. They're gonna have a prize. Yeah. I'm kidding. What language do we speak? This is also a tricky one. I've heard so many things. <laughs> Uh, but I think maybe you're gonna get that one. Yeah, sometimes it's sometimes it is the most obvious, and sometimes it isn't. So, Jesse, maybe you can stop writing the answers because we know you know them already. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, we speak Bulgarian. Um, I've heard that we speak Russian. I've heard that uh, uh, we don't have our own language. So since you don't have your own language, what language do you speak in your country? Also many people I've heard mistake Bulgaria with Belgium. So they think we speak uh, French or uh, German or that. Yeah. So we proceed on to the next one. What is the capital of Bulgaria? And please, Jessica, you can not say the answer to that one. <laughs> she just said she wanted to get the prize. <laughs> you already got the prize with the first one. Hmm. Rita took a guess. Someone else, maybe? OK, it is Sofia. Thank you. And this one is my favorite. If you could write an association that you have with Bulgaria, like um, uh, something that you've heard or something that you've seen, like you've been to Bulgaria and you've seen this a lot, and this is the first thing that you think of when you hear about Bulgaria or whatever it is, even if it's offensive, because uh, we get that. <laughs> nice. I have this... Uh, uh, the shops casalot, I have it further in the presentation. So, yes, 
I put it because many people know about that one. Wow, <laughs> really? Yeah, I heard it. Well, that explains uh, that our coast is so full of Germans during the summer. <laughs> Yeah, I saw. I think I saw a documentation about it. Really? Yes. Crazy. Maybe someone else. We have beautiful, beautiful landscape, shops, car salad, the cheaper Mallorca. Any other things you uh, associate with Bulgaria? doesn't look like it okay if you don't i'm gonna give you a few until the end of the presentation i hope yeah i think after the presentation uh, we we would see another picture of that but uh, yeah. continue let's go okay so that was the fun part now i'm gonna present <laughs> uh i include some basic uh, information about our country if uh, somebody finds it uh, interesting i didn't think of putting it at first because it seems like a common knowledge for me but then it was like hmm, maybe people want to make this statistics our population is uh, decreasing and in 2020 we were 6.9 uh, when i was a kid i remember always that it was uh, 7 7.5 and all of this and uh, Apparently, it's not seven anymore. Uh, our main ethnic groups are uh, Bulgarians, Turks, and Romi. We are pretty racist uh, towards uh, the last one. Um, but I think uh, every country has uh, some kind of nation that they're racist uh, towards them. I don't know. I find it uh, pretty... Uh, mm, Big turn off. No, it's just a turn off for uh, the country that I live in. Uh, our territory is uh, this big, <laughs> and uh, I compared it to Germany because uh, to me it uh, doesn't say anything. I just uh, wanted to have a comparison that's going to be more uh, clear for you to. Yeah, I think it's it's just a little bigger than uh, Bavaria, or yeah, it's definitely bigger. Maybe I don't know how Bavaria, how big is Bavaria. Uh, also, we are a democratic uh, republic uh, represented by a parliament. We have pretty weak uh, uh, government right now. We have elections uh, like a couple times uh, a year. It's uh, very unstable. But this is the last thing I'm going to say about politics because I am not so interested. And our most popular sport is football. Even though we're not so good at it, it's very popular and uh, many Bulgarian men play it. I'm also going to speak uh, more about uh, the sexism in the country. Maybe it's going to appear from uh, now and then. We're also a very patriarchal country. Uh, we are pretty good at tennis. If you heard about Grigor Dimitrov, uh, if you watch tennis, he's Bulgarian and he's very good. I like him a lot as well. Uh, and these are some facts that I find interesting about uh, our country. I already mentioned it was in the quiz that uh, uh, our country hasn't changed its name since its uh, foundation. And it uh, was in 681. Uh, also, we produce 85% of the world's rose oil. We have a uh, rose valley and the rose oil is a uh, uh, essential for the perfumes want to make perfumes so we are also famous with that we have our special yogurt uh, if you tried the greek yogurt ours is similar but we have this special bacteria that we're very proud of our bacteria that's also named after our country, Lactobacillus bulgaricus. And uh, we use it uh, in our, I mean, we don't use it, it's there anyways. So we make use out of it uh, in our yogurt and in the cheese that we produce in Bulgaria. Um, it's uh, also similar to the feta, but uh, it's cow cheese and it's uh, a little bit more sour. And our, 
actually our yogurt, we call it sour milk uh, or kiselum lako, if you want to remember that in Bulgarian. Um, something interesting that uh, I don't resonate with, but I hear it a lot from foreigners that they get very confused when we nod our head. Like, do we say yes or do we say no? Usually you say yes and you say no, right? But many foreigners say that Bulgarians say yes and no. Wow, that is um, it's really counterintuitive. Yeah, and if you don't know the language, it's uh, sometimes very confusing. Um, so I, I do say no, but I don't say yes. But the other day I saw this woman being like, yes, yes. And I, I was like, oh, I'm going to put this in the presentation because now I see it. And yes, this is really happening. Yeah. So do that. Don't get confused. It's also uh, put in every um, article online about Bulgarians. Um, like uh, um, hints, like if you go to Bulgaria, uh, remember that they nod uh, for uh, no. The celebration of name days, it's... Uh, Many people celebrate their name days more than their birthdays and almost every day in Bulgaria is somebody's name day. Um, this is also very curious. Um, younger people, they don't usually do it, but we have a lot of traditions that uh, um, older people are um, more familiar with and they still uh, perform their, them on their name days. I have some of them listed uh, later in the presentation. So I'm gonna give uh, a little bit more insight. Uh, this is what I was expecting to hear in the quiz uh, that we speak Russian. And uh, uh, this is so because uh, we, uh, Russia helped us in war and then uh, they are using our alphabet for the language and all of this. Um, the, the Cyrillic alphabet was actually uh, found by two men uh, Kirill and Metodi, which are uh, Bulgarian men. Uh, but it's okay, we're proud of our alphabet, but with the territory we have and with the small uh, population, it's hard to uh, uh, share this news with the world. So many people claim that we speak Russian and we have a lot of Russian tourists that come here and they speak in Russian and they expect from us to understand them. Um, actually, back in the days during the communism times that we had, uh, everyone was studying Russian um, because of, again, the support that Russia gave us. And then they wanted to uh, make us uh, like a small part of Russia somewhere further. But I also studied Russian. So when people ask me, oh, you're from Bulgaria, do you know Russian? And I'm like, yes, I know Russian, but it's not because we speak Russian or anything. I just decided that I want to know it. But that's okay. And this is also quite funny. Um, we have these posters of dead people everywhere. Um, and I heard, I don't know if, I think it's in a couple of the Balkan countries happening. Um, but yeah, I've heard some people that are very surprised and they're wondering what is this? Are people missing? And this is like uh, um, many people that are missing and we're sticking their posters but actually no when somebody dies we write the family writes how sad they are that this person passed away and they stick it on the tree they stick it on everywhere basically yeah. on the entrance of the building uh, I saw that there is a law that um, forbids uh, putting these things on the trees because it's bad for the trees uh, but to be honest I still see it so yeah um, the in law. Germany, we, we put uh, such things at the last page of the newspaper. Really? Yeah. That's interesting. We put baby pictures in the last page of the newspaper. Oh, wow. That's, yeah, we, we also have that, but that comes before. So you, you're happy. And then nice. You're <laughs> Perfect. I don't know. Well, we have them everywhere. Yeah. Um, what I mentioned about the name days, this is one of the name days. Uh, Jordan, or we call it uh, Jordan. Um, also, it is uh, uh, the 6th of January. People also celebrate the Epiphany or the birth of Jesus. And there is a big wooden cross that they throw in uh, a river or a lake or whatever they have nearby, like a water 
pool. I don't know how you call this. And uh, whoever finds it, usually it's done only by men because they're stronger and uh, all of this, you know. <laughs> uh, so only the men do that. And uh, whoever finds it, they bring uh, the health and uh, all the luck to their family. Uh, also, I read that uh, uh, newly married couples, they're also thrown in the river on this day so they can have uh, all the health in the world throughout their marriage. Uh, but yeah, usually it's performed by men. And then when somebody finds it, they go in the middle of the circle and they uh, wave uh, the cross and everybody's uh, singing and dancing and all of that. Um, it's interesting uh, and the waters are nearly uh, freezing on this day since, since the middle of uh, winter, but yeah. Uh, another interesting holiday is uh, St. Valentine's Day or as we call it, uh, St. Trifon. <laughs> Um, on this day, we celebrate the, the wine, basically. Um, I wanted to say that many of our traditions come from a religious background, but uh, as I said, we're not that religious anymore. We just want to take out the best from um, the tradition, like drinking wine on this holiday. Um, but uh, actually, it is uh, uh, made to celebrate the people who the winemakers the people who grow the um the vineyards and uh, harvest the grapes and all of this it's also performed only by men and the women are supposed to bake bread at home and serve it to the men <laughs> uh also quite curious these days uh the original legend is uh, that the guy trifon uh he was cutting his uh, uh vineyards and uh, virgin mary was his sister mm -hmm. and she passed by with jesus uh, in her hands uh on her way to church and uh, trifon laughed at her that she has a uh, illegitimate child and she got angry um so she went home uh, to tell his wife that he has cut his nose he had cut his nose while he was cutting the vi the vineyards and uh, the wife uh, ran to the vineyard, panicked, and she was like, what did you do? Did you cut your nose? What happened? And the guy started laughing and he was like, ha, 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 did you think I cut my nose? How like this? And then he cut his nose by accident while making fun of it. So that's why women are not allowed in the vineyard on this day, because it's bad luck. <laughs> that's the whole story. Um, but as I said, we just drink wine and... Uh, we say that whoever is not in a relationship on 15th of, on 14th of February, we're just gonna drink wine. That's it. Uh, 1st of March, it's uh, coming soon. And it's a very cute holiday, I think. Uh, we call it Grandma March or Baba Marta in Bulgarian. And uh, basically we give each other bracelets that are shown on the picture with red and uh, white thread. This somehow symbolizes the beginning, the beginning of uh, uh, spring. And uh, we put them and we say, I wish you to be uh, smiling and healthy and all of this. And uh, when you see the first stork, you know, the storks go to the uh, warm lands. And when they're coming back, when you see a stork, uh, you have to remove your bracelet and put it on a blooming tree. And usually the trees after March, they look like this. So uh, many people are protesting against putting plastic on the, uh, the bracelets because then it all goes in the nature. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, uh, I find it nice this holiday, spending money on Chinese uh, bracelets. <laughs> Always perfect. <laughs> yeah. uh, actually, people do them themselves. Um, we were having these workshops in uh, in school before and in the social enterprise where I work. Right now we have a, a campaign uh, and uh, the youngsters that work with us, they're making the things and we're selling them for our cause. So it's uh, also uh, another way to support our enterprise. Um, 
this is uh, something that is uh, not so trendy anymore because uh, it uh, um, mm, it requires a lot of many things. It's called nestinarstvo uh, or anastenaria from Greek. It's uh, performed in Greece and in Bulgaria as well. Um, and it happens uh, between 21st and 23rd of May. Um, basically, uh, people make a big fire and uh, they, uh, after the fire stops, how, I don't know how is the, this thing that's left after, after the Ash? fire called. Ashes? It's not ashes because it's still burning. Ah, Anyways, yeah, I, in, in German it's glued. I don't know. English. Yeah, I, I didn't check this up in English, but you can see it on the picture, yeah. basically. Still, whatever is still going, still hot. Uh, yeah, so it's a traditional barefoot fire walking ritual. And um, it's again a name day. Um, <laughs> Saint uh, Constantine and Saint Elena. Uh, the only thing that uh, I think is the purpose of this is to praise the these two saints i don't know what they have done exactly i'm not very uh, religious as well so i'm not religious at all so i can't tell you so much about it um i mean i don't find it so interesting right now but uh, the magic of this thing is that uh, women are not only women people are dancing on um on the fire and uh, it's also listed uh, as a UNESCO intangible cultural uh, heritage. So uh, I find it, I never seen it uh, live performed. It's uh, happening usually in the small villages in the mountains. This is something that I see a lot because it's happening on the coast. Um, it's a very nice tradition that originated in Bulgaria, um, 1st of July or July morning, we call it. Um, this is basically um, the beginning of, uh, not the beginning, but to celebrate the hippie movement and the freedom, the new beginning. Um, it originated from one of Uriah Heep's songs. I don't know if any of you know about this group. Um, they're, mm, they didn't do anything in my times, but uh, I've heard about it from my parents and my older brother. So basically people gather on first of on the last day of June and they greet the sunrise on first of July and uh, we make uh, we camp on the beach or there are some concerts sometimes that are happening and we just greet the sun and it's a very um, heartwarming uh, holiday for me. I like it a lot. Um, usually younger people do it because older people don't want to camp on the beach the whole night. Um, but I like it. I wanted to post some of my pictures but uh, that I've taken on this day, but they weren't so nice. Um, this is uh, also a very interesting tradition that, uh, that we have. Um, it's something like uh, Halloween, but not really. People compare it with that. It's uh, done before Easter or after Christmas, and its purpose is to uh, make the bad spirits go away. So people dress uh, up in these very ugly costumes with animal skin and all the bells that make a lot of noise uh, around their waist. And they jump and they make some traditional dances um, in order to make the spirits uh, mm -hmm runaway screaming something like this yeah. uh, these costumes are very heavy so it's also performed only by men because only men can carry heavy things <laughs> uh, and kids uh boy kids ah, oh, sure yes <laughs> yeah of course there are some women that are uh, like I don't care. I'm also going to carry yeah. 20 kilos of animal skin on my head and they go and they do it. Um, it's uh, very touching. Uh, there are some people playing traditional instruments. And um, even though I'm not so um, integrated or I don't know how to say in these uh, traditions, when I see something like this, it touches me a lot. And I, 
I really, in these moments, I appreciate my culture a lot, even though I don't wear this and I don't walk on fire. Yeah. But um, I find it uh, very nice. Uh, as Henry said, I, uh, I'm studying culinary arts and I uh, adore cooking a lot. So we have uh, many traditional tasty treats and uh, dish uh, that we prepare. I put some of them on this presentation. There are many others. Uh, Banitsa, it's uh, maybe the first thing that you're gonna hear about Bulgarian uh, cuisine. It's a very simple thing. It's made of dough and the Bulgarian cheese that I told you and some eggs and milk. Basically, you see everything on the picture and butter. Um, usually, uh, every family is like, my mother makes the best banitsa or my grandma makes the best banitsa. And right. there's this conflict, like, who makes the best one? Um, so this is it. And the pumpkin dessert that you see on the right, we call it tikvenik because tikva is pumpkin. Uh, it's uh, the same dough is used, but in, it's like strudel. You know it with the apples and all of this but yeah. we use pumpkin um yeah basically it's uh, pretty similar and the Fropska salad here the hero of the night um it's very simple it's just tomatoes cucumbers and pepper and cheese again maybe onion there are so many variations these days so i i don't know exactly we use parsley a lot as you can see and on the left is uh, tarator, which is similar to tzatziki, if I can compare it, but it's a soup. So we make a cold summer soup. Uh, that's also very tasty. And usually you put 10 tons of garlic so you can smell um, the whole week afterwards. It's uh, very nice. I love it. And uh, some walnuts and cucumbers. Uh, these are also pretty typical things, especially in the mountains during winter. Bean stew with sausage. Uh, I cannot say anything more. It's just this. <laughs> it's just uh, beans with sausage, and they're very nice. Usually the sausage is uh, beef sausage. Uh, and the sarmi, I think it's maybe my favorite Bulgarian uh, dish, if I can call it like this. We eat it usually around Christmas. Maybe this is our traditional Christmas food, if I have to name one. It's uh, sour. We marinate the cabbage. Usually uh, a proud Bulgarian has a big uh, barrel where they made their um, cabbage with uh, some vinegar and all of this. They marinate it. Um, and then we roll in the leaves. We roll rice and some meat. Very simple, but um, if you make it good, it's uh, amazing. I can eat 10 of those and I'm gonna be so happy right now, but it's not uh, Christmas anymore, so. Uh, and here it's the part where I'm showing you some of my favorite locations that if you come one day to Bulgaria, for me, it's a must visit location. Uh, Veliko Tornovo, it's a, uh, comparatively big city in the middle of uh, Bulgaria. It's in the center of Bulgaria and it's a historical and cu cultural capital as well. Um, it has its old town that's very beautiful with very beautiful architecture and very beautiful buildings. And there is a river passing nearby. On the right picture, it's uh, the fortress in Veliko Tornovo. Uh, and also it was a capital of uh, uh, the second Bulgarian empire back in the days. It's uh, an amazing city because of the way the houses are positioned and uh, there are a lot of cultural events happening there as well. Plovdiv is the other um, city that uh, I really like. Usually I'm not a big city person. I like the small villages and the places where you can really see the uh, the culture and the traditions of the country but since bulgaria it's small you can also do that in the bigger cities uh plovdiv it's uh, also um i think it was a cultural capital in 2019 
uh, or 2018, 2019, I think. Um, and there is on the right, the picture on the right, there's this very nice part in the center, which is uh, also full of uh, some art and cultural events that are happening, very nice cafes and restaurants. Um, and on the left, it's the Roman theater of Philippopolis. Uh, there are some myths and legends about, uh, I can't tell you who right now, but uh, also nowadays there are some theater plays that are performed there, there and some concerts. It's, uh, it's a very nice place to have a concert, but um, many people in Plosif are actually complaining about the noise because it's open air and yeah, their houses. Just, I was just about to ask you if you see the house on the, on the left. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there was a rock fest uh, there last uh, year and it was uh, three days until late in the night and many people were complaining and uh, I think it's not going to happen again. <laughs> so, anyways. Uh, Lenovo, this is uh, one of the places where people celebrate 1st of July that I uh, talked about earlier. Um, it's a very nice uh, um, rocks that people jump from. Uh, you can see everywhere you can see right now there are people jumping, uh, also people dying because it's very dangerous. Uh, but if you know where to go and uh, if you don't throw yourself on a rock, you have uh, high chances of not dying. I went once and I jumped once. I was dying in the air a little bit, but uh, I landed successfully and I'm yeah. here right now. Um, but it's a very beautiful place also to go and take a walk on a sunny day if you're not into extreme uh, jumping from 20 meters in the water kind of things. So, very nice. Devil's Throat Cave. Um, this is a very famous cave worldwide. If you are into caves, maybe you heard about it. If not, maybe no. <laughs> but uh, there are... Um, it's, uh, it's not so beautiful, the cave, but it's very uh, mysterious because it's uh, very deep and there is a hole with a waterfall in it that uh, a river goes through it and uh, people were throwing things back in the days in the cave and they were waiting for the things to appear on top of, mm, on top of the surface in the river and they were not appearing. And um, once the village nearby was flooded and many things from the village, they went in the cave and they disappeared in this hole and they came back on the surface months after. And nobody knows where the water is going. There were many divers that uh, went inside and they died there and their bodies were never found. Uh, many people threw their cameras and the camera just stops working at some point and it never appears again. Um, it's, uh, I don't know, there's no explanation about this. It has been included in some National Geographic, uh, I don't know what, like a magazine or uh, uh, research uh, as well, because there was one person from National Geographic that tried to, um, to explore where the water goes, but I think this person also died inside the cave. I don't know. Um, I went there three times, I think. Mm, it's, it's a very magical place. Many stairs to climb as well, as you saw already. Um, the Seven Rilo Lakes, unfortunately, this has become a very touristic destination and it's not how it used to be, but I think it's still worth it to go once because it's very beautiful. It's basically seven lakes in the mountains that uh, they all have... Uh, names like the kidney, the heart, because they look like a heart or a kidney or things like this, the eye. And uh, before the walks there were very um, calm and beautiful. Now, as I said, since it's a touristic destination, um, there has been a lift that goes somewhere and the uh, mountain paths are with the uh, cement. I don't know how you call this in English yes. right now. Yeah, well, this, uh, which is a shame, I think. 
I went the year before this thing happened and it was amazing. In winter, it's also very beautiful because some of the lakes are freezing. The denivelation is uh, quite big. Um, and Rila actually is uh, the mountain where we have our tallest uh, mountain peak. I think it's the tallest in the Balkans, 2,975 or something like this. Um, yeah, so very beautiful to go and see. And the Open Air Ethnographic Museum. It's uh, basically a small village where they have this museum that takes like half of the village already. And uh, it shows like, if you go there, you go a little bit back in time, seeing how people are, um, how people practice their crafts. Like you can see the shoemaker and how they're making shoes, or uh, you can see uh, a person who's making uh, purses from leather, or uh, people who are, um, I don't know, uh, there is this uh, water. Uh, yeah, I know what you mean. Uh, yeah, and people are washing their clothes there to see how they washed it uh, before when there was no laundry machine and all of that. Um, it's very beautiful. And also the architecture of the houses are, it's very nice to see. Um, some of them are brightly colored. There are some museums, some of the houses are museums and you can go inside and see like the traditional um uh, Bulgarian, uh, not costumes, but like what women and men were wearing back in the days and uh, how they were um, doing their, uh, I don't know, the socks even, and um, how they were cutting the sheep's, uh, uh, not fur, there's a special word for this, sorry for Ooh. the terminology and, and this. Yes, well, that it's also uh, very beautiful and uh, interesting. I haven't been there for many years. I was going quite a lot when I was a kid. And here I I prepared a short Bulgarian lesson, uh, which uh, maybe some of you have heard some of the things. Zdrasti means hi. Uh, it's we have many ways of saying that, but Drasti is the, uh, the mediocre one. <laughs> uh, we have a lot of slangs, so it depends on where you're coming from. Mm -hmm. Where I come from, they laugh at us because we speak very softly. I know that you have a lot of these things in Germany, so you understand. <laughs> yeah. uh, Kaksi means, how are you? Obichomte is, I love you. Yako, I decided to include something stupid, so I say it a lot. <laughs> um, yako, it's uh, cool. Aide, it's a very universal word. You can use it for many things. Um, you can say it in any occasion and it's not going to be stupid or it's going to be very stupid because you say it all the time. But um, it means like, let's go or come on or you can use it like, I uh, to the sea or I stop uh, eating so much or I don't know many many yeah. situations it's like an exclamation or an expression rather than something meaningful but yeah blogodaria means thank you and the simplest way to say bye is ciao which you know already because we all know Italy so you Ciao is also in Bulgarian. And uh, that's it. That's uh, how I see my country. <laughs> in, uh, Thank you so much. Um, to, to the audience, you can uh, always uh, write your questions. Uh, maybe I start with a question from me and uh, exactly to this topic. Do you also have, um, do the younger people include uh, English? words in their slang uh yes uh, i'm also doing it because i'm also speaking in english uh, most of the time and somehow it's uh, um, hard to escape from that also in these modern times where 
Mm, we just see that everywhere. Some stupid slang words that yeah. we can't avoid. Um, yeah, Bulgarian people, not only young people use them uh, nowadays, because also uh, people that are not so young, they want to be trendy and it's a way to understand each other sometimes. I just came back from a work trip and I'm the youngest person and I was trying to avoid using these words, but then I saw that everybody was using them. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, maybe we're going to do it. Even full sentences sometimes, you know. Um, so, yeah, we we are doing that. Interesting, interesting. Yeah, I don't, I don't see uh, too many questions. You probably have answered everything uh, in a perfect manner, so nothing uh, stayed unclear. Yeah, I hope so. Thank you for the comment about the nice landscapes. We really have beautiful landscapes yeah. in the mountains and in, in the coast as well. But do you have like um, big flat areas or is everything a bit mountainous? Um, we have one valley that's uh, flat, but usually we have one big uh, mountain chain that goes right in the middle of the country. And... Uh, on the east side on the west side of the country we have all the mountains mm -hmm. and on the east side it's uh, the coast which is mm, it's not flat because we have as you saw that you of a picture with the sea we have a uh, high cliffs and uh, then the sea it's a uh, um, no it's not flat yeah interesting um Elke asks um, about the relation from Bulgaria to the neighbor states. Yeah, I understood that. Uh, yeah, I wanted to say that I also know German, but I am refusing to speak it in front of people right now. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, um, it's uh, interesting. We're very big uh, nationalists, as I said, and uh, we don't like the Romanians. And the Romanians, I think they also don't like us so much. Um, usually we say that we are dumb, but the Romanians are dumber. I didn't say it, they say it. <laughs> um, but we travel to Romania from now and then. We have a lot of Romanians that are coming um, in summer and not only. Maybe that's why we don't like them. I don't know. Um, but is it so like a like a love-hate relationship or just hate? <laughs> oh, it depends on who you ask. Oh, okay. You mean love, like laughter or love-hate? So, love-hate, love, like uh, I think the um, the North European countries, they, they always joke about each other that they see themselves as a kind of a little community. I think we have this with the Turkish people okay. because uh, we were um, their slaves back in the days. And uh, if you ask somebody that is like 100 years old, maybe they're going to kill a Turkish person. But nowadays we're, we're not carrying this uh, baggage so much anymore. And um, I think we like Turkish people, but some people are making this... Uh, racist jokes or um, even based on religion uh, types of jokes. But at the end, we see each other and we're like, oh, oh, oh. we have this uh, interesting uh, exclamations that we use uh, among each other with the Turkish people. Yeah. We have a pretty big conflict with Macedonia because of uh, our history that uh, we shared back in the days because we were one country. And then Macedonia is saying that uh, some Bulgarian people like um, activists back in the days that uh, um, did a lot for the Bulgarian history they're saying that they're Macedonian and the Bulgarians are hating on this and uh, they're taking it very personal so we have this conflict and now that Macedonia wants to join the EU Bulgaria is uh, rejecting this and we don't want this to happen because we yeah. hate Macedonia um, me I've been to Macedonia twice and people actually react okay to the fact that you're a Bulgarian. I think it's not, I mean, depends on who you ask again. And um, 
Yeah, we like the countries that are further than our borders. <laughs> uh, Germany, we like a lot. Yes, yes to Germany. <laughs> not, not too many, right? Because you don't want to be this... Uh... I think this Mallorca culture, <laughs> I, it's, it isn't the, the thing you should strive for, I think. I don't know what's the Mallorca culture. You know so much about Mallorca, Henry, that maybe you should... Oh, all, all Germans, no. I, I have never been there, but uh, we have our stereotypes. But maybe we should continue to the next question. Yeah. Um, I think a, a really interesting question from Jessica. Um, what is the best time of the year to visit Bulgaria? Um, I think depends on what you want to do, uh, but for sure during summer, because I live on the coast and here we have summer tourism and most of the restaurants, most of the events that are uh, cultural related, they are happening during summer. There are more things to do during summer and also the weather is uh, nicer because it's pretty windy here when it's not It, I mean, it's windy all the time, but when it's hot, at least you're not cold so much. Um, so I would say summer, but for example, now I was in the mountains skiing and it's nice to go there during winter, but also hiking during summer is amazing. Summer. I vote for summer, <laughs> for sure. Yeah, interesting. Um, the next question is uh, our environment, sustainability, climate change, important topics for young people in Bulgaria in particular? Uh, yes, they are. Um, unfortunately, there are not so many young people in Bulgaria and it's, I mean, comparing to older people. Yeah, similar. And, um, what? Similar to Germany. We yeah. have more old people than young. Yeah, so it's hard to... Um, to get to the point where we are in control of that. And uh, I mean, th I think this is for the whole world basically right now. Many people care about this and they want to change things, but other things are stopping them. Also, we don't think we're powerful enough to change something and we prefer to leave the country. Uh, I think since younger age, we've been raised with the thought of maybe escaping our country. That's why we are learning so many languages in our high schools and um, also because uh, our um, financial uh, standard is not so, it's very low comparing to other European countries and our salaries are not so high comparing to other countries. So it's harder to travel and all of this. And uh, me, I started studying German when I was uh, eighth grade with the thought that I'm gonna leave my country and go in Germany because mm, actually because my father was working in Germany and I was embracing this idea. Yeah. Um, as you can see, this didn't happen. I'm studying in Bulgaria right now, um, but maybe I'm not gonna stay and raise my kids here because of the mentality that uh, many people are having, as I mentioned. I didn't mention, I didn't say it, but it was implied in some of the things that I said. Yeah. Um, there are important topics. I also working in the social enterprise that I work, we are trying to um, wake people up a little bit, especially young people. And we're trying to do something in terms of uh, changing uh, whatever. Um, this is something for the sustainability or something for um, the vulnerable groups um, or climate change. I actually, I, I don't think that we care. I mean, also younger people, they're trying to care, but they don't know how. This is also an issue yeah. because nobody's educating us and it's very hard to teach a person to throw their trash in the bin um yeah okay um you already expanded a bit on the sexism in bulgaria uh, britta looks like she has been to bulgaria she asks yeah are, they, are there jobs uh, who aren't suited or or women yeah, yeah. Not doing i got it Uh, I have seen many uh, women that are taxi uh, drivers. Um, mm -hmm. I don't think there is a, a job that 
I think I would rather say that there is a job that's more weird for a man to to take rather uh, a woman, for example, yeah. uh, kindergarten uh, teacher or something like this. But also uh, repairmen, usually they're men, you know, these are these professions that um, they're all the same in most of the countries. And there's like one per, one woman that works like a repair woman, you know, but there is I don't think there is such job that uh, women can't um, have in Bulgaria. Like, uh, I don't think there is this limit. Just people choose not to because of what people are going to say, for example. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm trying to think about this because I haven't, but I think I can't go further right now. I'm <laughs> blocked. <laughs> yeah, um, to the audience, you still have a chance to write your question, but I don't think there's, it looks like there ain't coming um, questions. So, These were also very nice um, questions. Um, yeah, I don't think there's coming much. So um, I thank you, Marina, for this uh, great expansion on um, Bulgaria. Um, it was really a pleasure. Um, I, oh, there's a, someone thanks you. I think you yes. can understand it. Um, <laughs> yeah. Just a quick note yeah. to the audience. Um, the next uh, event is in March on 22nd. Uh, again, the fourth uh, Wednesday of the month. And uh, there we will talk about Malta and hopefully have a such a great guest as today. Um, yeah, have a good evening, everyone. And we'll uh, stop the meeting. Goodbye. Bye. Thank you for joining.